Hi and welcome. We are a part of the mental health support team that works closely with your school. We have been asked to provide some information about stress, particularly exam stress, and the following slides hope to give you some strategies to manage the natural stress and anxiety you may experience with regards to exams. So what is stress? Stress is the body's reaction to feeling threatened or under pressure. It's very common, can be motivating to help us achieve things in our daily life and can help us meet the demands of home, work and family life. But too much stress can affect our mood, our body and our relationships, especially when it feels out of our control. It can make us feel anxious and irritable and affect our self-esteem. Experiencing a lot of stress over a long period of time can also lead to a feeling of physical, mental and emotional exhaustion, often called burnout. This graph shows us that a certain level of stress is needed to help us focus and motivate us for the tasks ahead. However, it is clear that too little or too much stress can affect our performance in a negative way. Our aim is to help you manage your levels of stress so that they are at the optimal or most helpful level prior to your exams. So how does stress make us physically feel or affect our thinking? As mentioned in the previous slide, too much stress can have a negative impact on our performance. It can also lead to a number of physical sensations and ways of thinking that lead to poor performance. The strategies that we have suggested on later slides aim to help pupils in controlling the physical sensations they experience and the unhelpful changes in their thinking. When we have a negative thought about a situation, and remember a thought doesn't necessarily mean that it is true, a part of our brain, the amygdala, says emergency and automatically initiates changes in our body to manage the perceived threat. This is frequently referred to as the fight or flight response. This response is entirely normal and means that your body is responding to the perceived threat in the way it should. The amygdala then interprets these body changes as further evidence that something is actually wrong, which of course further activates the system and creates a vicious cycle where you become more and more anxious and physically and emotionally overwhelmed. This response is helpful when there is a real threat, however not so helpful when the threat is a worry or a negative thought we have had about an upcoming event, such as exams. It is important to attempt to manage these physical sensations and the following slides give examples of how this can be done. When you are stressed, you may experience many different feelings, including anxiety, fear, anger, sadness or frustration. These feelings can sometimes feed on each other and produce physical symptoms, making you feel even worse. The longer term effects of stress can impact on your sleep and appetite. We can also develop negative thinking and spend more time than typical worrying about upcoming events. You might also notice difficulties with memory, concentration and making decisions. There are some helpful things we can do when we notice the immediate physical sensations attached to stress or anxiety. The following slides expand on the two main ways of managing those feelings, through breathing and grinding exercises. It is important to recognise that the suggested strategies do not fit for everybody. However, there are many mindfulness websites that describe a number of breathing and grinding strategies that may be more helpful or resonate with you as an individual. If it's something you are interested in knowing more about, then please approach one of your pastoral team for support. These strategies can also be built into your daily routines, as well as being used in the moments of heightened stress. It is important to recognise that drinks with higher levels of caffeine can produce similar symptoms to stress and anxiety so should be avoided, especially in the evenings, as this can lead to poorer sleep. The effect of the fight or flight response is to lead our breathing to become fast and shallow. This can lead to a number of other physical responses in the body. 
Breathing strategies are aimed at controlling this breathing and can have positive effects on levels of anxiety and stress. As mentioned earlier, there are a number of breathing techniques that can be used to control unhelpful ways of breathing. These include triangular breathing, so breathing in through the nose for a count of four, holding for four and then out for four, or 7-11 breathing, to breathe in for seven and out for a count of 11, and square breathing, to breathe in for four, hold for four, out for four and hold for four again and then repeating. Find one that you feel comfortable to use at times of increased stress or anxiety and then practice before you need it. Thankfully, we can use grounding techniques to break out of this vicious cycle of physical sensations and unhelpful thinking. By refocusing on your body, what you're physically feeling and on the immediate environment, you divert your mind away from anxious or stressful thoughts and into the moment. This is one example of a grounding technique that involves you noticing and focusing on. Firstly, five things that you can see around you. Four things that you can feel or touch. Three things that you can hear. Two things that you can smell. And one thing that you can taste. Take a deep breath to end the exercise. The following strategies are aimed at managing the stress of exams over a longer period, not just in the moment of heightened stress and anxiety. They aim to support you in developing positive and helpful habits, develop good organisation and develop good support structures to help you perform at your optimal level when exam time comes. Good habits. Take frequent breaks. Psychologists say we can only concentrate properly for 30 to 45 minutes at a time. When you take a break, make sure you don't stay at your desk. You could go for a walk or even just make a cup of tea. Eat well. Keep a good blood sugar levels to avoid highs and lows of energy by eating slow release foods like bread, rice, pasta, fruit and veg. Drink loads of water. People often underestimate how much hydration helps, especially with concentration. Think about when and where you work best. Not everyone is a morning person, and some people don't find the library a productive place to work. There's no one best place or time to work. It's about what works for you. Keep active. Even a short walk will do. Exercising is one of the quickest and most effective ways to de-stress. Fresh air will clear your head and perk you up. Try to get about eight hours of sleep a night. If you're stressed about not being able to sleep, there are loads of ways to aid a good night's sleep. Find activities that help you relax. Maybe it's a hot bath, watching a TV show, or a creative activity. Schedule this downtime into your timetable. Loads of people will tell you this because it's true. Exams aren't everything. Whatever happens in your exams, you can still be successful in life afterwards. So if you don't do as well as you'd hoped, try to keep things in perspective. Employers don't just look at your exam scores. They're just as interested in your attitude, your transferable skills, and how well you get on with other people. Exam success doesn't define you as a person. Everyone copes differently in different situations, and there's so much more to your personality than how well you can respond on an exam. Once you've done an exam, try to forget about it. There's nothing you can do about it, and worrying won't change the mark. Get organised. Picture your exams as a time-bound project. Are the exams 60 days away? That's your 60-day challenge. Best of all, there's a definite endpoint. Work out the basics, which exams you have, how the marks are allocated, and how much you have to learn for each one. Don't expect to learn everything, but having in mind where you'll get the marks can help you prioritise. Break your revision down into small chunks and form a plan. Once you've got a plan, you won't have any more dilemmas at the start of the day about what to work on. Schedule in plenty of free time to unwind and protect this time. No one can work all day, every day. If you give yourself plenty of rest, you can do the same amount of work 
in half the time or less. Equally, don't panic. If you go slightly off schedule, tomorrow is another day. Use support. Don't be put off by friends saying that they are doing huge amounts of revision. As already mentioned, that's probably not actually a productive or effective way of working long term. One of the key reasons people feel exam stress is due to comparing themselves to other people. If you can, discuss with your parents what they're expecting you to achieve. Parents with steep or unrealistic expectations will just add unnecessary pressure. It's helpful to let them know what you think you have the capacity to achieve and to insist that the best way to get there is to have support from your parents, not pressure. If you're feeling really worried or anxious, chat to a good friend, a family member, or someone from your school like your form tutor, head of year, or member of your pastoral support team. It helps to get it out of your system, and they may well be able to help you think about practical strategies to help deal with exam stress. Thank you for listening. We hope that you found this helpful. And remember, if you have any questions or need further support, you can talk to a member of staff at your school, such as your form teacher, head of year, or member of your pastoral support team. Thank you.